Pete, how's it going? Good, good, man. How are you? How's uh, I'm doing all right. It's uh, yeah, nice sunny day out here today, but uh, still winter. How's it? How's things been in Northern California? California is so good right now. It's like spring has sprung. I mean, I'm talking poppies and mustard seed in the vineyards, but like I've just been so hunkered down. Like the weather's been good, so it's like get outside. But I am so cracked on solo training rides right now like it would be really fun to kind of do a thing i just i can't (laughs) i can't just do more like plug and play solo rides with like the interval button i'm kind of over it yeah well i've been doing a lot of skiing and whatnot but as the the days (laughs) slowly start to get longer and the you know snow is slowly starting to to deteriorate i'm uh really starting to miss riding my my drop bar bike i've been been on the kicker been on my fat bike been on skis but um definitely having someone to help kind of push you and you know having you to try to keep up with will definitely uh yeah, definitely push my buttons and get me in gear yeah let's, let's try to get a thing together maybe yeah maybe we can kind of feed off each other that old training camp style i mean that's uh that's something we both miss The day I stepped my first foot in the city Where I promised I wouldn't sell my soul The day I stepped that one first foot in the city Where I promised I wouldn't sell my soul But when the lights and the scene they shine down on me I swear to you that night I saw the light Now if the devil comes a-calling You can give him my apartment And I will sign right on that dotted line Colin may be from Texas Ian may own a farm but they don't have a buckle like this. (laughs) I very quickly realized that Unbound and uh, one of my potential FKT attempts may be the first big things to happen this year. And we kind of need, I need to whoop myself into shape. So I started looking north and I realized that there's the Lost Coast, which I'd heard about. People kind of whisper about it, but I never touched any of it. I kind of was like, oh my gosh, I think this fits the bill. And I was texting with Ian. It was kind of the same thing. It was just, he was like, oh my gosh, like I need to whoop myself into shape. And I said, hey, if you can make it here, like let's do this. And then that, that cold snap happened in Dallas. So I was busting Colin's balls about, he just can't have a February in warm weather no matter where he is after Boulder last year. and. He kind of said the same thing, is just he's lacking that, that impetus to go get pushed and to push himself. It's, I think we all kind of need to feed off each other right now. And it was like, it, it just made sense. much about the Lost Coast. I don't know about the geography. I know it's gorgeous. I know that it's wet. I know the redwoods are majestic and big and old, but um, I guess we'll have to find out. I got a call from Pete uh, really about three weeks ago, I believe. It was pretty pretty darn last minute. Uh, and he, yeah, he proposed, hey, do you want to come join us for a, join Ian and I for a couple of days out on the North Coast? Yeah, I was definitely jumped at the opportunity. And uh, at this point in the year, I'm really ready to, you know, start kicking my ass and doing the hard work that you have to do to get yourself back, you know, in race shape. And who better to do it with than Ian Boswell and Peter Stetna. And I feel like Colin, Pete and I all came here looking for something different and maybe we'll find it on the Lost Coast.
So the idea was big days and lots of vert. I mean, really a proper training camp because also what I miss and, and I think what Ian missed is we've really grown up with always doing that winter training camp. And now that we're in this solo lifestyle of Gravel Pro, it's, there's not really that. I've never been the one to put my dudes up in fight Cause I've never met a dog whose bark was worse than his bite I've known Pete from racing the World Tour. I've only met Colin one other time. So to actually be here and just spending like five, six hours a day just riding, I feel like when you're riding is when you really open up and your mind is just like vulnerable and exposed and just talk about, you know, all sorts of different ideas and thoughts. And that's where you really, you really get to know someone is when you're out riding a bike. And especially on a trip like this, when like you do get lost, you are hungry, you are cold. Like everyone's just there together, experiencing it as one. People often ask me why I do this to myself. So I often dodge the question, say I do it for my health. But the answer is much deeper here than I'm willing to tell. But nobody tells deeper Welcome to the Lost Coast, boys. The strenuous life is definitely more rewarding. When you've been through the snow and the cold, and then you hit the sunshine on the coast, it's, it makes it so much more worth it. Just the idea that we can get, you know, almost 400 miles from Santa Rosa in a few days through this terrain is mind blowing. Um, yeah, it, it really just is the ultimate way to experience a, a landscape. So take all your judgments, save them for someone else. My psychology is no mystery, and my worth is not your will. I just need a friend to help me and a friend who needs my help. Oh, he rose all I ever wanted to be. I think you should put that coat in again, then push along. Day two, packing up, raining again. Dogs barking, heading to the coast. I love camping. I don't love camping in the rain. I was happy that we had a house. This is like the perfect, for this time of year, the perfect type of bike packing because there's still a sense of adventure, but a sense of comfort. I don't think any of us are very experienced bike packers, so this is a great way to get started in bike packing until you learn how to carry your equipment. objectives were setting out beyond do some really long bike rides and have a reason to do long bike rides. Um, the boys have made me step up my game and I hope I've made them step up their game so it very much did become a training camp at the same time. Yeah you're just riding off of this thrill of where we are and what we're doing and um we all want to be here and we all love what we're doing here. So you're trying to extend time to make this as long as possible. It's really mind blowing to spend, you know, four hard days in a row with riders like Pete Setton and Ian Boswell and you really gain an appreciation for the depth of fitness that they've built from their time in the world tour. No matter what point you are in the ride, they can just dig that much deeper. I'm starting to feel a little bit tired by that. I think everyone is. Unzipped. Uh. Um, it's, it's 
it's interesting. It's it's three frenemies, I guess. Um, we are supporting each other now, and we're pushing each other harder than we thought we could, with the end goal of beating each other later in the year. So in this weird roundabout way, I'm helping Colin and Ian beat me later in the year at the important races, and they're doing the same for me. I'm not sure in my head how I'm justifying this at the moment, um, knowing that my job is to beat them in two months. However, I need them to help me beat them. I'm gonna contemplate that with this Vista and my coffee. Dude, I'm going swimming at the end tomorrow. Uh, I like beer. Yeah, thank you guys, man. What a, what a, we are so lucky. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> Thanks for making this look cool. Yeah.